Today I'll be lecturing on regression diagnostics, and in the previous lectures you learned about linear modeling with, um, and regression and how you can use predictors, your x values, in order to estimate your y values. And we'll talk about today the assumptions that those models make and what happens if those assumptions are violated and how we know if those assumptions are violated. Like t-tests and other statistical tests that you've learned about, linear regression makes a number of assumptions. And if these assumptions are violated, the p-values, confidence intervals, and estimates may be invalid. So it's important to know if these assumptions um, could be violated in our models so we can know um, with what certainty um, we can report estimates and confidence intervals, things like that. In practice, the assumptions are rarely satisfied, but oftentimes we can look at the, the data and look at the results um, from our diagnostics and see that they're good enough, but um, it helps us to know if there could be problems in the model. It's important to check if these assumptions are true and what will happen if they are violated. Okay. So with our, our model, we assume that it's equally likely that our estimated y could be less than or greater than the true y, um, with, and it's normal, the errors are normally distributed. So that's what this epsilon i is normally distributed with mean of zero and sigma, that's what this term means here. There are a number of different ways that these assumptions can be violated, and I'll, I'll go through um, each possibility and what effect it has on um, estimating our y here. So here's a main um, summary slide for the assumptions. This is a little more clear to see the, the main assumptions in the model. Um, so the, we assume that there's a linear relationship between the y and the x's. We assume that the x's are fixed. And we assume that the error in our model is, um, the errors are independent and normally distributed with a mean of zero and constant variance. One way that um, these assumptions can be violated is if we have a nonlinear model. So if the true relationship between the y and the x's is nonlinear. So examples of this would be if there's a quadratic relationship where, or um, like a threshold relationship where it increases and then it tapers off. So that wouldn't be a linear relationship. Um, so if that's true, then the regression model is, will be biased because we're just creating a straight line through data that really isn't a um, straight line. It could be curved or some other relationship. In this case, the coefficient estimates and predictions will be unreliable and the p-values and confidence intervals will be invalid. So the mo regression model won't give us very much information about the data. Um, in this situation, uh, regression may be useful for testing the null hypothesis that it, there's a relationship between the x and y, but it can't really tell us much more than that. So in this case, we'd want to uh, use an, a nonlinear model or some sort of other model, which we haven't learned about. Um, another violation of the assumptions if the x's are measured with error. Um, so in the standard regression model, we assume that the x's are fixed, they're non-random. So the, the x's that we input into our model are the true data. Um, but if there is a lot of error when we collect the data, um, then we just don't have good data to begin with. And the estimates of the regression coefficients will be biased and all p-values and predictions will be invalid. Um, in practice, this is rarely a problem unless measurement error is large. So usually we can assume that the x's are fixed. Um, if there is a problem with um, measuring with error, um, regression probably shouldn't be used. Um, another violation is heteroscedasticity. That's a, a fun word. You can try to use it in casual conversation to sound smart. <laughs> Um, so what that means is it means that there is non-constant variance in the errors. 
Um, so for instance, if you have extreme values of um, Y, it could be possible that your errors could be way off and you don't have that um, normally distributed error that we want in our model with uh, a constant variance. So I'll show you an example of this on the next slide. Um, when heteroscedasticity is present, the coefficient estimates will still be unbiased, so we still get that, that line through the data that's the same. Um, but a problem is that the standard error of the, the coefficients and residuals may be inaccurate. So the true value of y may be a lot farther than that regression line than we estimated it would be. This results in our confidence intervals being too narrow and p-values um, being too liberal. So we don't get, we can't use our standard errors to, um, with any sort of reliability. So here's a picture of heteros heteroscedasticity in data. And this is just a plot of the residuals, um, which would be the y value here is um, the value for the residuals and the x would be the value for y. So you can see how it sort of is like a, kind of like a funnel, like a funnel on the side. Um, so as you get further out for values of y, the error gets a lot bigger. And what we want to see in this sort of plot is we'd like to see um, the mean about zero, so the mean about that straight line, and then just random error with no pattern. That's what we're looking for. But here, the, the variance isn't the same with the data. It becomes a lot greater the farther you go out. Um, so this would be an example of heteroscedasticity. It's a hard word to say. And we'll go through some examples um, with data sets that um, we've covered in previous lectures to show um, this a little bit more clearly. Right now it's just an overview of the different types of um, assumption violations that we can have. Another violation is autocorrelation. This is when residuals are correlated with one another, so they're no longer independent. Um, and this is very common with time order data where you have, um, you could have like a cyclical pattern. Um, and I'll show you on the next slide uh, an example of that. Um, in the case of, as in the case of heteroscedasticity, uh, it leads to inaccurate standard error estimates um, because our errors no longer are normally distributed with and independent. So we can't um, we can't use those to get a reliable standard error estimate. And because our standard errors are not accurate, um, we have inaccurate confidence intervals and p-values. So here's some graphs of autocorrelated data. Um, so you can see a cyclical response. Um, so if you see this, if you're graphing your data and you see that there's a, a cycle present, uh, then uh, the assumption of independent errors is violated. And the regression uh, will no longer give us an accurate standard error. Another violation we could have is if the errors are non-normally distributed. So in our regression modeling, we assume that errors are normally distributed. And if they are not, um, then our assumptions of our t-tests and f-tests are not satisfied. So the p-values we get won't be accurate. Um, but oftentimes, if we have large enough data sets uh, without out large outliers, um, the central limit theorem uh, makes this a non-issue. This is only a problem if we have very small data sets. So oftentimes this is not a problem. One way we can check to see if our errors are normally distributed is using QQ plots. So here we have um, on the right are the QQ plots and on the left are histograms of data. Um, if we have heavy tail data um, it results in a QQ plot um, with uh, deviations from that, that straight line that we want at the um, extreme values. So the far left of the QQ plot and the far right. Um, for light-tailed data, which is the bottom one here, 
uh, where, where our variance isn't as great as we would expect in, in normally distributed data. Um, we also have some deviations at the um, extreme values for the QQ plot from that, that straight line that we want. Um, two other problems that QQ plots can identify is if we have positively skewed data. So this would be if there's an outlier um, to the far right of the data, then it will result in a QQ plot where it's um, curved under that straight line that we want. If it's negatively skewed, such as if there's an extreme value to the far left of a data, then it will also, you'll also be able to identify it in a QQ plot. Um, so these, are, these slides here could be a um, useful tool if you're looking through your data and want to see what sort of pattern or skewness is present. So these examples um, aren't real, like strong deviations from the normal assumptions, but they can indicate some sort of pattern of skewness in your data. So if you have an outlier that you need to remove, it could fix these QQ plots. So they're a good tool to diagnose problems in your model. Other issues that we can have are if we include an irre irrelevant variable in a multivariate regression. So if we include something that really isn't associated with our outcome value, it just adds more variance to our model. Um, so it won't be, the model won't be as good of a predictor of the outcome variable as we would hope it would be. If we omit a relevant variable, so if we omit um, an X that actually is related to that Y, then our estimates will be biased because we aren't modeling the true relationship between the variables and the outcome. Another problem is multicollinearity, which is when our predictors, so our X values, are highly correlated with each other. Then um, this results in increasing the variance of the model. So these are other things that we want to avoid when we're doing regression modeling. Here we have a, a summary slide of the problems um, and how they affect our regression model. So nonlinear relationships and X is measured with error will result in bias coefficients, bias standard error, invalid F-tests, and high variance. Heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation result in bias standard errors, invalid F-tests, and high variance. So these won't affect the, the line through the data, but they'll affect how far we can um, estimate with the error of the data. A non-normal error distribution will result in an invalid F-tests and high variance, um, including irrelevant Xs um, can cause the variance of the model to increase, and omitting a relevant predictor results in a bias coefficient, a bias standard error, invalid F-tests, and high variance. If we have multicollinearity in our data, it results in high variance. So these are all problems that we want to um, diagnose in our data in order to get a better feel for how our model, um, how good of a mo model we have. So the easiest way to check for violations of regression assumptions is to plot the residuals versus the predicted values of Y. So this is what we saw uh, before when I showed you that example of heteroscedasticity. Um, that's a, a plot of the re residuals versus the predicted values of Y. Um, if you see any sort of pattern, then the assumptions may be violated. So if the errors aren't um, distributed with a, a mean of zero, so they're not right along that line, and they just sort of um, are randomly, they should just be randomly distributed across the plot. Um, but if that isn't the case, then the assumptions for our error may be violated. Um, and then we can use a QQ plot of the residuals um, to see if the errors are normally distributed. Um, so an example of this is the stack loss example. In um, previous lectures, we went over this. Um, so we attempted to predict the efficiency of chemical conversion based on airflow, water temperature, and acid concentration. 
So airflow, water temperature, and acid concentration, those are our predictors. Those are the X values. And the, chem the efficiency is our, our outcome, our Y value. So we want to see if our regression assumptions are satisfied. So um, we can use R to plot the data for us and use it as a tool to check if these assumptions are true. Um, so here we have the um, regression model. So we predict stat stack loss um, based on all of the variables in our data. And then we can use the plot command. Um, and here we input our regression model, which is the stack loss.lm. And then which one through three, I'll talk about that in the next slide, but that tells our which plots that we want. Um, so here, the, the which one through three will um, generate a plot of the residuals against the predicted values of y. It'll uh, plot a normal QQ plot of the residuals, and it will give us a plot of the absolute standardized residuals against the predicted values of y. Um, so you don't really need the which one through three, but if you omit this, it gives you a whole lot of other plots um, which are necessary for the assumptions, the diagnostics that we're going over in this lecture. So the first graph that it gives us is the residuals versus predicted Y. It gives us a little line um, which illustrates the pattern in the residuals. Um, so we'd want it to be um, the average to be about this zero around the zero, which is the, the bar across the horizontal. Might be a little hard to see. And then um, we just want random dots on the graph. So here we can see that there might be a little bit of a problem with. Um, so does anybody remember the word for the variance that isn't the same? It's the fun word. Yeah, heteroscedasticity. Um, but it doesn't seem to be a major problem. And here we have the normal QQ plot where we'd want it to be, the data to be distributed about this um, line. And we can see that for the most part, it's about right at that line. Um, maybe a little bit of extremes left of the QQ plot, but for the most part, it's pretty good. And this is a, a graph of the absolute standardized residuals um, versus predicted Y. So what this does is it um, converts all of our negative values to positive. So we'd expect um, just a random uh, cloud of dots on this. And this red line um, should be um, just kind of random, but here it seems like we might have a little bit of a problem with heteroscedasticity, um, but for the most part, it's pretty good. So we can conclude that the model isn't too bad um, from looking at these diagnostics, um, but there could be some evidence of um, heteroscedasticity, and then when I, uh, I'll plot the data, and you can see that there's curvilinearity. Um, so that means that there's... Uh, like a, a relationship between X's and Y's is kind of curved. It's not really a straight line. Um, so our um, regression diagnostics, um, they help us to be able to interpret how um, confident we can be in expressing the coefficient estimates and predict Y values. Um, so here we need to be a, a little bit cautious. So we can't really take the coefficient estimates as they are. We might It might be a little bit off. That's something to um, be careful about, and especially when the predicted stack loss is large, um, it, our model doesn't give us as reliable of an estimate for the, the Y values. So the efficiency would be our, our Y value. Another example um, of testing the assumptions is with the stopping distance of a car based on its speed. We can go through the same process for this data. So we want to look and see if the assumptions are satisfied. Um, so here we predict the residual, uh, we plot the residuals versus the predicted values of y. Um, so it seems like we can look at this and see this red line. So it doesn't seem like uh, there, it doesn't seem like the the 
errors um, have the same variance. It could be a little bit of heteroscedasticity, but it isn't really extreme. And then our QQ plot, um, we have a little bit of deviation from the line um, up at the top and down at the bottom, um, but for the most part it seems, seems fairly good. And then the plot of the absolute standardized residuals versus predicted y. Um, we can see that it's pretty much okay. Um, could be a little bit of heteroscedasticity. Um, so the plot of the absolute standardized residuals versus predict y and the plot of residuals versus y, they should, um, they tell you the same thing, um, whichever one's easier to read, basically. Um, so we can conclude that the model looks pretty good although there is some evidence of slight heteroscedasticity. And then there's also, um, could be a bit of skewness, that's from looking at that QQ plot. Um, and overall, um, it's probably safe to assume that the assumptions are satisfied. Um, so are there any questions after these couple examples? I'll show you an example in the next one. Um, so it is a little bit, there are some um, statistical tests that you can do for deviations from the QQ plot. Um, I don't know if you have, we covered those in this class, um, but right now it's kind of an assumption type deal. You have to look and kind of assume, see if they're different um, from the line than you'd expect. So it's just kind of a visual um, and it's a little bit arbitrary, but when you have extreme deviations, it's pretty clear by looking at the data and the, the plots. Um, so this is one. Of, this will be a severe violation of the assumptions. Um, so this is a UK data set um, in R contains the, the quarterly gas consumption in the UK for the years uh, 1960 to 1986, and so we'll look at. Um, we'll predict, attempt to predict gas consumption at a given time using regression. Um, so I'll show you a, okay, so here we um, use the regression command, the LM, um, to create a linear model of the data. And here we go from 1960 to 1986.75. So what that means is it's three quarters of the way through the year and we plot it by um, every three months is what we're doing. Um, and then this plot here that gives us those, those three plots that we can look at for regression diagnostics. Okay, um, so here's just a regular plot of, of UK gas versus time. Um, so you can see it has a cyclical, cyclical response. Um, do you remember what kind of violation that is, what that's called. Yeah, it's autocorrelation. So here, a straight line through the data wouldn't give us very much information at all, which is what a regression model does. Um, so we can't, we can't use a regression model with any sort of accuracy in predicting values. And I'll show you in the um, plots how this um, shows up. Um, so here, we have the residuals versus predicted y, and you can see that it has sort of like a weird like cyclone kind of shape, and it's not just the, the random error that we'd hope to see. Um, so we can see that there's some problems with our error, major problems. And then with the QQ plot, we can see that there's um, some extreme deviations from the line um, at the the far right and the far left of the data. Um, and if we were to go back and look at those um, QQ plots on the previous slide, uh, previously in the lecture, we'd see that this is an example of data with heavy tails. So there's extremes, uh, positive extremes and negative extremes from the mean. And then when we look at the absolute standardized residuals versus the predicted Y, we can see that there's a trend as well. This red line shows a trend, and we don't want there to be a trend in the data. So we can conclude that there is strong evidence of extreme heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation 
So our model here would not be very good. So our regression model wouldn't tell us much about um, predicting uh, gas consumption. You can see from the QQ plot that the distribution of the residuals is clearly non-normal. That's because it has heavy tails. And then, um, so all of that the model would tell us is that gas consumption increased significantly over time, um, but it doesn't tell us anything about that um, cyclical relationship. Um, we don't really know much about the variance in the data. Um, so our model doesn't tell us a whole lot. Other ways that we can diagnose problems in our data is by looking at just plots of Y versus each predictor separately. Um, so when we looked at the, the gas prices, um, we could see that there was a up and down sort of response. We could just look at that and, be, and identify that there's autocorrelation in the data. So our regression model um, might not be a good, a good model for the data. And we can, I'll go through the, the stack loss data and show how we could have just looked at X, Y versus X plots to see um, problems in our regression model. So here, if we plot stack loss versus airflow, um, we could see that for the most part, um, it follows a, a straight line. Um, so we could just plot a line through here and it would give us a pretty good model of our data. Um, except for we have one outlier down here. Um, get uh, the plot of stack loss versus water temperature. Um, you can see that maybe we have a curved line relationship here um, where it would curve up from as the water temperature gets greater. So it might not be a linear relationship that we have. And then if we were to plot stack loss versus acid concentration. Um, this, there really isn't a relationship here. You can see it's just kind of random. Um, so adding acid concentration to our model wouldn't tell us much about stack loss. And if we add a variable that's irrelevant, um, it just adds more variance to our model. Um, so we might just exclude this, this um, acid concentration from our regression. So we can see that there's a strong linear relationship between airflow and stack loss, um, with that exception of that one outlier that I identified. And then the relationships between stack loss and water temperature may be curvilinear um, and may be kind of a curved line instead of the straight line that we'd want. And then the relationship between acid concentration and stack loss is very weak, and there are several large outliers. Um, so ways we could fix this is we could predict stack loss using only airflow. And we saw in previous lecture that adding water temperature to the model leads to a minimal improvement in R. Um, so oftentimes if um, adding a variable just barely changes the correlation between the X's and the Y's, it's not really a good idea to throw, uh, include that um, X in the model because it'll just lead to more variance. Um, and we could also attempt to model the curvilinear relationship between stack loss and water temperature. Um, so when we look to see if there's problems in our data, we can go through those QQ plots and the plots of residuals. And then we can also um, plot, uh, look at the plots between each of the variables and Y to see if there's problems in our um, linear model. Do we have any questions at this point? A lot of new stuff looking and review of, of old as well. Um, so just things to keep in mind doing linear modeling. A lot of times it's it's good to go through these um, checks of uh, checking if the assumptions are true um, before we make predictions about the data. Um, so some points to remember: uh, the various assumptions must be satisfied in order for a regression model to be valid. Um, so there are various consequences if these assumptions are invalid, and that's back to that, that summary table, which shows um, what happens if the assumptions aren't true, how our coefficients may be off, or our standard error may be off, and how this can affect 
the conclusions we're trying to make from our model. And we can attempt to verify if these assumptions are valid by drawing various plots. And this would be the, the QQ plots or the plot of the residuals versus the predicted values of Y. And then the R command that we went over, and the new one is this plot command, and here plot lm. Um, so this the lm dot obj is the um, that's the regression model that we previously defined, and this plots various diagnostic plots for a regression objects, and we can specify the which uh, one to three to get those three main plots that we want.